welcome to the Chemistry 121 Subhole Instruction Series of videos. I'm Joey Smoking. This episode we're basically just going to be kind of reinforcing a scientific notation concept and teaching you guys, well, not really teaching, but working out some problems about how to get into scientific notation and how to get out of scientific notation. So we can go ahead and start with a pretty basic example like we did in the conceptual video with one trillion, which as you know is an insanely big number with an insanely big number of zeros like that. Now, if you remember from the concept of scientific notation, you basically just take these really giant numbers and compress them down into something small. So how exactly do you do that? Well, when you see some kind of a big number like this, what you want to do is look for the first non-zero number. And in this case, it's 1. And that will constitute the first part of scientific notation. So we can write the 1 right there. And then, if you remember, there is another part of scientific notation which tells us the number of zeros that come after the first non-zero number. So to do that, we indicate this times 10. This is a power of 10, which is the placeholders for all these zeros. And then we have to indicate with an exponent up here the actual number of zeros that comes after the first non-zero number. In this case, it's 12. So we write 1 trillion as 1 times 10 to the 12. Now you're probably wondering what happens if we have different non-zero numbers in the beginning. Let's say we have something like 321,000. Okay, a little bit different. Now the same concept applies, which what we want to do is look for the first non-zero number. In this case, it's 3. So we'll go ahead and write that. And if you remember from the conceptual video, the first number has to be between 1 and 10. This number here has to be between 1 and 10. So in order to account for all these non-zero numbers, we're going to have to go 3.21. Okay? Then we're going to again do the times 10, which is a placeholder for all these zeros. We see there's three of them. But remember, we have this 2 and this 1 here. And they also are placeholders of a type. So we have to count those as well. In this case, we're going to have five places. So we're going to go 3.21 times 10 to the fifth. Okay? So this is pretty simple when you think of it this way. Another way you can think of it is to just find the end of the first zero and go count the number of places all the way this direction until you get just before the first non-zero number. So we can start here and just count all the places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's our 1 times 10 to the 12th. Same concept here. We start here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3.21 times 10 to the 5. Either way will work just as well. It just depends on whatever you're more comfortable with. Now, in order to get out of scientific notation, it's obviously just going to be just the opposite. You're going to find your decimal point here. You see there's five places, so you're just going to go we know we have the 3 and the 2 and the 1. Our decimal is here. We've got to go five places that direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And notice that we had to put three zeros here to account for all those five places. And we wind up back with what we started. So this is how you get into scientific notation out of it for really big numbers. But remember, scientific notation also works for the smaller numbers as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those. And remember, the best way to really learn scientific notation is to just practice a few different numbers. I mean, once you get comfortable with it, it'll become second nature and you won't have any more problems with it. Okay, so let's take a really small number, let's say 0.000059, okay? So again, we're going to look for the first non-zero number. In this case, it's 5. And again, it has to be between 1 and 10. So we're going to go 5.9, like that. And then our times 10, because remember, we have to count the you know, the placeholders for the zeros. Um, but remember, since we're dealing with a small number, it's going to be a tiny bit different. We're counting all these small zero placeholders. So our exponent is going to be negative. That indicates to us that we're dealing with a really small number. Okay? So we're going to find the number of zero placeholders, basically, before the first non-zero number, which is 5. So we start here, and we're going to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be 5.9 times 10 to the negative 5. Again, pretty simple, okay? Now, if you want to get back out of scientific notation for a small number, it's just the opposite. So you're going to start here. You're going to have 5 and 9. Our decimal is here. Remember, we're going negative 5. We're going to be going to the left to make a small number. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We went five places, and we had to put four zeros in there. 2, 3, 4. Like that. And that's how you get out of scientific notation for really small numbers. So it's pretty simple stuff. Basically, just remember that for your small numbers, you're going to be dealing with the decimals 
going this direction for the really big numbers, you can deal with it going that direction. So it's pretty simple stuff. Go out there and get some practice in. All right, we'll see you guys later.